The work of Nobel Prize has transformed our understanding of the world. While approaching the Nobel Prize winners in chemistry, we not only learn their achievements, but also the spirit of honesty, tenacity, innovation, and forging ahead. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's class, Nobel Prize winner in chemistry. 同学们，你们好，欢迎走进今天的课堂——化学诺贝尔奖。今天要给大家介绍的是诺贝尔奖得主，也是富勒烯的发现人——罗伯特·科尔。Today, I will introduce you the Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, whose name is Robert Cole, for his discovery of fluorine. Hi, please look this picture on the left and on the right. Is the picture on the left very similar to the one on the right? Yes, it's like a football. The sphere of the left graph is composed of pentagons and hexagons. But it's like a football. It's not a football. It's a fullerene. It's also called a soccer olefin, which is a new kind of chemicals made from carbon-carbon bonds. Nobel Prize winner Robert Kerr won the Nobel Prize in 1996. He works at the Rice University in the United States. He shared the Nobel Prize winner with Harold Kroto and Richard Smalley for their discovery of fluorines. Kerr is best known as a member of the team that discovers the carbon cage compounds. They are known as the fullerenes that could be produced in good yield when elemental carbon vapor is allowed to condense under the right conditions. The fullerene are the only known forms of elemental carbon because of its maximum symmetric and high relative yield. I call so hydrogen. Carbon-60 is also called as the Baku ball fullerene. It's the most well-known of the fullerenes. Over his long career, Carr has carried out research in a number of fields of physical chemistry involving both experimental and theory. His research had primarily focused on the study on the spectral structure and the kinetics of small free radicals using microwave spectroscopy and tunable lasers. He developed the theory of their fine and hyperfine structure. The purpose of using tunable laser was to develop a sensitive method for detecting these radicals. And thereby providing defective information about their electronic and geometric structure, and to study the kinetics of their reactions. Thank you, Professor, for coming to this interview with us, yeah. um, Professor Colwyn. Uh, I believe, and I read something about you that you got your first chemistry box when you were quite a small That's right. child.、Yeah. Was that how it all started? Yes, it really is. Really, I, I.、Uh, Had a I got this chemistry set. I think it was for Christmas. It's a little hard to remember for sure. And I had a little room over the garage that I could play with it in. And essentially, what I did was all of the little ex experiments that they suggested in the booklet that came with it. And I hadn't exhausted the possibility for mixing up chemicals, so I I tried mixing every possible try every possible combination to see what happened. Uh, and anyway, I became fascinated with chemistry and decided, essentially, then to become a chemist. The video we just saw is the interview with Professor Kerr at the 55th meeting of Nobel laureates in Lindau, Germany, June 2005. Professor Kerr talks about his interest in chemistry as a child. The work for which he has awarded the Nobel Prize, memories from Nobel Week, and his working life after Nobel Prize, etc. Now you may wonder what are fluorines. Fluorines are made of carbons. Carbon is the element that assumes a number of different forms. 
in nature, for example, graphite and diamonds. Florins also caught off the bulky moss tree florin, any of series of hollow carbon molecules that form either a closed cage, we call it uh, the bulky balls, or it's a cylinder as the carbon nanotubes. In 1985, Robert Carr, Richard Smalley, and Harold Croto irradiated a surface of graphite with laser pulse so that carbon gas was formed. When the carbon gas condensed previously unknown structures with 60 and 70 carbon atoms were formed. The most common structure has 60 carbon atoms. It cage-like molecules composes of 60 carbon atoms joined together by single and double bond to form this kind of hollow sphere with 12 pentagon and 20 hexagon faces. The structure were called fullerings in order of architecture Buckmaster follow who work with his geometric shape, whose geodamistrom is constructed on the same structural principles. The fullerings, particularly the high symmetrical carbon-60 sphere, have the beauty and elegance that excites the scientists and non-scientists alike. Prior to their discovery, only two well-defined forms of carbon were known. They are diamond and graphite. The fullerings constricted the third form. Their discovery had led to an entirely new understanding of the behavior of shaped materials. It has opened an entire new chapter of nanoscience and nanotechnology. The new chemistry of complex systems that atomic scale that exhibit advanced material behavior. Nanotubes in particular exhibit a wide range of novel mechanical and electronic properties. They are excellent conductors of heat and electricity. They possess an incredible tense strength. Such properties hold the promise of exciting applications in electronics, structured materials, and medicine. Practice applications, however, will only be realized when accurate structure control has been achieved over the synthesis of these new materials. The carbon-60 molecule undergoes a wide range of novel chemical reactions. It readily accepts and donates electrons, a behavior that suggests possible applications in batteries and advanced electronic devices. Some of novel following derivatives exhibit advanced materials behavior. Particularly important are crystalline compounds of carbon-60 with alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. They are compounds are the only molecular system to exhibit superconductivity at relatively high temperature above 19 K. Superconductivity is observed in the range of 19 to 40 K, equivalent to minus 254 to minus 233 degree. Fluorines have pretty structure and many extraordinary applications in optical, electronical, and life science. They are a gift to humankind. We have to thank Robert Kerr and other scientists for their discovery and making use of fluorines. How do you think? Thanks for watching. 多年来化学家一直煞费苦心的企图合成龙状分子富勒西及其衍生物具有许多优良的性质 
强磁性等，在光、电、磁等领域有潜在的应用前景。2010年，科学家通过太空望远镜发现，在外太空也存在富勒烯，也许外太空的富勒烯为地球提供了生命的种子。在流行文化中的富勒烯元素很多，并且在科学家关注它们之前就出现了。在新科学杂志中，曾经每周有琼斯写的叫做《蒂达拉斯》的专栏，来描述各种有趣但很难实现的科学和技术。1966年，他建议可能通过掺杂杂原子来扭曲一个平面的六边形组成的网。从而得到一个中空的探球分子。2010年9月4日，谷歌的首页上用一个旋转的碳六零富勒烯取代了 Google 图案中的第二个 O， 来庆祝富勒烯发现25周年。可以说，碳六零的出现为人们开辟了一个崭新的研究领域。好了，本次课到此结束。谢谢大家，再见。